Hello, welcome back to the series of consumer tips. And this is the continuation of the video in relation to what you should need to consider when you're gonna buy a cell phone. Now, in the last video, I went over a number of things. So now I'm dealing with part four, which deals with uh, intended usage and performance. Now, to make this as uh, simple as possible, what I have done is separate into seven criteria, which I mentioned the last time, which is RAM and processor, storage, battery, audio, camera, build quality, and software. Uh, so now, now what I'm going to be doing is going through these as quickly as I can, and to give you a clear idea of what you need to know when, when it comes to buying a cell phone overall. Now, one, RAM and processor. I'll try to make this as less geeky as possible because this is probably where you lose a lot of people. The importance of RAM and processor is that they essentially affect the speed of the phone. It affects the speed of multitasking and processing of things such as photos and videos. Essentially, the general idea is that the better the chip or the processor in the phone itself, the better the photography and videography of the phone. That is something that runs along with it because a lot of the processing now is software. So hardware is important in the phone, but software is extremely important. Hence the Google Pixel being such a good phone despite having less cameras and such and such. So what I'm going to do going forward is separate I iOS and Android, basically Apple and, and Android phones, right? The reason is that Apple releases, let's say one chip each year and tunes the RAM to the extent that the amount of RAM is not a major aspect of the phone's performance. The only time a processor becomes important consideration if you are on iOS is if you probably have an older edition of the iPhone along with the older battery. I will get into battery later on but you'll see what I mean. Uh, but generally um, even if you get let's say a processor from two years, three years ago, they will still be quite relevant today because iOS generally has a more powerful processor and they tend to be, many may consider like a year or two at least ahead of Android when it comes to processing power, like raw processing power. That's another complex thing, but I'm trying to make it less geeky as possible. Essentially, iPhones tend to, tend to be more, part the more powerful chip but that does not necessarily mean that it will end up moving faster or operating faster than Android. Uh, it's a bit of a toss up really and truly over time. So Android, there are two main chip makers that we really recognize, they're probably obvious, but the two main ones is the Exynos, which is Samsung, and there are the Snapdragon, which is made by Qualcomm. Most phones in the, most parts of the world, they use Snapdragon chips. Generally, there is low-end, mid-range, and the flagship versions of the Snapdragon chips. Uh, basically, to make it simple as possible, anything that is not the 8 series is generally not a flagship chip. It's probably a low-end or a mid-range chip. Now, I'll be fully honest. For general use, for most persons, Majority of persons do not need a flagship phone, a flagship um, processor. Essentially, most of you do not even utilize half or even a quarter of the functions that those chips can power. Because the chips that we have today are extremely powerful. The phones that we have today are extremely powerful and most people do not utilize the full functions of the phones that they have today. So generally what I would say is that if you're gonna get a phone, uh, I think a mid-range chip is quite good enough for majority of persons. And if you don't want to get a mid-range chip, you can also settle for a older um, chip that is a flagship chip. So I say the 845, um, 855, which is last year, which currently right now we are at the 865. So if you find a chip that is older, let's say S9, S9 will still be very quite powerful today. Uh, S10, of course, is still powerful. Uh, S8 will still be relatively powerful and relatively fast. And it might still be very, very much faster than a mid-range chip. It might not have all the features, but it might still be faster. So let's go to RAM. 
Now I see that RAM did, was not a very important thing in Android, uh, sorry, in iOS. However, RAM is extremely important when it comes to Android because Android is not tuned uh, specifically for uh, certain apps and certain phones to, uh, to basically catch up or basically account for that fact that they don't have um, that tuning process. The Android phones generally have much more um, RAM. So you might find an Android phone with up to 12, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is generally more than what most computers have. So I definitely do not need 16 gigabytes of RAM. What I can tell you for sure is that this sweet spot is probably six gigabytes of RAM. For the majority of persons, I say the sweet spot is four gigabytes of RAM. So to make it straightforward and simple, you can get a, 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 a mid-range chip, a, eight, a six series or seven series chip with four gigabytes of RAM. And for the majority of persons, that is all you need. However, if you're gonna go flagship, then six gigabytes of RAM and uh, eight series chip, perfectly fine. Do a dual majority of what you wanna do, photography and everything will be extremely great. Factor number two, storage. Why is storage important? Well, in the age of cameras taking higher quality videos and photos, in the age of apps taking up more space, the reality is that storage that used to uh, be enough in the past is not enough now. I can say outright, do not buy a phone with 32 gigabytes of storage unless it, there is ex it has expandable storage. All right? Do not buy an iPhone with, 60, with 32 gigabytes of storage. Do not. All right? I would even say do not buy an iPhone with 64 gigabytes of storage if you can avoid it. Because unless you're using Google Photos, to store all your photos, or are you using, uh, you're willing to spend money to pay more money for the iCloud, doesn't make sense to get an iPhone with 64 gigabytes of storage. You need more storage than that, especially if you like to take a lot of photos. You don't want to be in the middle of your photo session, be like, oh shucks, uh, shoot, I need to delete this bit. I have seen that so many times, especially with persons who have iOS phones. So, I would suggest 128 gigs as a sweet spot for iOS and I would say persons who have 64 gigabytes of, of storage all right for the Android and the company that with an expandable storage um, SD card an SD card essentially that is perfect because with the SD card you can expand it to most of them most of them right now go up to one or two terabytes of storage you don't even need all of that but you can get that essentially so you can have an android phone the uh more or less a computer amount of storage <laughs> which is ridiculous so we have a situation now where our phones now have more ram than our computers and they have more storage than our computers right than most computers oh, probably not mine anyway Let's go on. Item number three, battery life. Why is this important? The reason why it's important is that if your battery is not working properly, it doesn't matter how powerful your phone is, it will not work the way it's supposed to work. You do also do not want to have to be constantly plugging in, uh, watching your phone with anxiety. They can't take a proper video without the phone dying. So battery life is essential. What I would recommend in relation to battery would be that you um, have a sweet spot. There's a general sweet spot of 3,500 milliamps, right? But some people can get 3,200, it's not generally a problem. And this is generally for Android I'm, I'm speaking about. It could also work for iOS, but iOS is not. Battery, they tune it in such a way that, that uh, the software trumps more or less the battery except in the case of the iPhone SE which is a new the iPhone SE 2020 edition for what I've understood or my understanding is that the battery is a problem so you need to take into account that if you want to buy that phone and you want to keep it for those four or five years uh, you don't want a phone that has poor battery performance when you buy it because the battery will degrade and within two to three years, 
you will be having anxiety every time you leave the house because you have to walk with the battery pack right so that's something you need to consider if you're going to get an iphone generally iphones were not known to have good battery life probably until the iphone xr the iphone 10 10 the new 10 series the 10 10 s max and 10 and xr those are that's when generally they were known to have to have good or decent battery life so i can generally say no iphone has has fixed the battery life woes so you generally don't have a problem except maybe for the iphone se which has a really which has a 2000 million battery it's not a problem i would say the sweet spot or as i said before is 3500 but if you can get 4,000, even 5,000, hey, why not? All right, the only thing you need to take into account is that they large the battery, take the phone. So that's something awesome to take into account when you're going and dealing with these kind of things.